thee we come, O Lord our God. Blessed Mother Mary, the holy apostles, martyrs, and faithful, who have lived. 
who suffered and died for the gospel of Jesus Christ, and dwell with you, my brothers and sisters, to witness my confession and pray for me to our Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and the remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. <coughs> Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, that of charity of heart, we may worthily fulfill this holy action, establish the remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy, we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments, and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. May we say it together. Let us pray to the Holy Trinity, Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, indivisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace with the deep honor. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For the you alone are our Holy One, you alone are our Lord, you alone are our Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O merciful God, grant we may hear your word with willing heart and apply ourselves to fulfilling them. May we progress towards spiritual perfection. And after completing our earthly pilgrimage, may we be united with you in all of eternity. We ask for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The lesson prescribed by the Church for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from St. Paul's first epistle to the Thessalonians. You are witnesses, as is God himself, of how upright, just, and irreproachable our conduct was toward you who are believers. You likewise know how we exhorted every one of you, as a father does his children, how we encouraged and pleaded with you to make your lives worthy of the God who called you to his kingship and glory. That is why we thank God constantly that in receiving his message from us, you took it, not as the word of men, but as it truly is, the word of God at work within you who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Your faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decree. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God. You cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also 
And there he is, holding the keys of the kingdom. Now Paul, on the other hand, he never, ever met Jesus. His encounter was after the resurrection. He experienced the startling vision of Jesus on the road to Damascus, and he was actually going to Damascus to, uh, to actually work against the church. He was not even a follower of Jesus. And then Jesus parts the skies and says, Saul, Saul, what are you doing to me? And Paul's experience of Jesus, again, was not the carpenter from Nazareth, not the Jewish boy that grew up to be the Jewish man, but the glorified Christ of heaven. And this led Paul to see Jesus' mission as worldwide and all-encompassing. He was no longer a rabbi. Now he was the savior of all the world. And it was this Paul who then went on more than any other apostle to spread the gospel anywhere and everywhere in the known world at that time by preaching an inclusive word of God. He said that the law, all of those rules and regulations, all of the past, he said, that's not what Christ is about. Christ is about the spirit and openness. And he said, as long as you have Jesus, he says, then you've got salvation. In the epistle to the Ephesians, in Paul's name, there's a paragraph about putting on the whole armor of God. And for the most part, that armor is defensive, shield, breastplate, helmet, all to protect us. But the one offensive piece of equipment is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, according to Ephesians. And Paul wielded that sword so effectively that he challenged the status quo and he planted churches throughout the Roman Empire. And he challenged those earliest Christians that heard his message. Now your job is to go out and do the same thing. Paul didn't say just listen, take it home, and then get saved. He said take that message and share it with others. If we did not have Paul, if we did not have that saint right there on the gospel side, in the place of honor, right there next to Jesus, with that sword of the word of God, it is very possible that we may not be here, or we may be here, but not exactly as we are. We would have many more Jewish traditions along with our Christian faith. It is Paul that built the church that we know today. And we know that Paul thought of the word of God as actually something more than him just talking. The oldest piece of extant Christian literature anywhere in the world is 1 Thessalonians. It, there's nothing older anywhere, not a little fragment, nothing. That first book of Thessalonians is the oldest that we have. And to that young, small congregation in the Greek city of Thessalonica, just trying to stand on their own for the very first time, Paul wrote that the words that he preached, that the sword of the Spirit that was the Word of God, that was their first encounter with the faith, they were not his words. Instead, they were the very Word of God. And that is extremely humbling. As I stand here, or as any priest stands here, as any pastor, any minister stands here, to realize that we are not just sharing our thoughts, that somehow God is speaking his word through this experience right here, right now. That is extremely humbling. And this is why we call the word of God a sacrament in our church. And we are the only church that does it. Sacraments share the real but visible, invisible presence of Christ with us, but in a visible way. You know, some sacraments are real easy to define. When you come forward and you receive the host and the wine, you have a visible sign of the body and blood of Christ. We've had a couple of baptisms this month. So when the baby is over there at that baptismal font, and you see the water being poured over the head, and I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have a visual sign of something invisible that is the grace of Christ. But some are more complicated than that, and one of them is the Word of God. But there are others. I don't know, I think I've mentioned this a few times, but I, I don't wear a wedding band anymore. I haven't for a lot of years. Um, the thought of it not being able to slip over my knuckle used to drive me nuts. And so I finally, I just took it off and, well, Sharon, she's okay with it. So that's the main thing. She's okay with it. But, you know, just because I don't wear a wedding band doesn't mean that I'm not married. The visible sign is no longer there, but I'm still married. Uh, when the kids come up for confession over here, I have the purple stole on. The purple stole is important, but the confession still takes place even without a purple stole. So it's all complicated, and sacraments are still able to be traced all the way back to the life of Jesus. You have a real hard time doing that with the sacrament of matrimony. The only reading that the church can come up with for a gospel reading during marriages is that a wedding took place in Cana, and Jesus turned water into wine. Nothing about marriage, but that it took place at a wedding feast, but there's no real connection to matrimony. Confirmation comes along after Jesus dies and resurrects. So those are hard to tie into the life of Jesus. 
But the word of God, that's what Jesus did. Jesus was known as a preacher. Jesus is known for his parables. That's why we also have that hymn to the Holy Spirit, because we're invoking God's presence so that we can continue to proclaim the word of God just like Jesus did. Everything about Jesus, it's so easy to understand him as a preacher of the word of God. But the sacrament doesn't stop here. It doesn't stop with the proclamation. Paul says to those first Christians and to us today that the word of God is at work in you believers. The word of God heard and preached. It's not only from this side of the communion rail this way, it's also out to you. You have a sacramental power in the word of God that can let you share that same gift of the gospel. Take Paul's example one more time. There's no way that one man could possibly have spread Christianity as far and as wide as he did in that earliest church. But Paul's churches did an amazing job. Paul would visit cities along Roman highways, and they would become the hub. And then from those cities, the message would go out for all of these different people through business connections, family connections. Every time somebody went out somewhere else, you know, they would say, back in Thessalonica, I heard this guy talking about Christ, and they would start preaching that message in another little church was born. Then from that little church, it spread out further. And that's the way the early church began. It wasn't something that was dictated from on high. It was organic. It spread out as the people spread out. And this had to happen hundreds and even thousands of times. And we'll never know the details of how it happened because it was all anonymous. It's lost to history. But there is one occasion in the New Testament where we do know the names and how it happened. He never visited the city of Colossae. But a man named Epaphras heard Paul preaching. And when he heard Paul, he went back to his hometown of Colossae. And he said, I heard this guy Paul talking about this guy Jesus and that Jesus is alive again after he died, and that church in Colossae was built by Epaphras because he heard Paul, took that message, and shared that message, and the church grew. Think now about Jesus' parable that we read in the center of the congregation, and it's read there on purpose to say that this word is meant to be heard by all of us, and it belongs to all of us, and it's supposed to be shared by all of us. The word that is supposed to be shared far and wide it can take a beating, but it is still going to keep on going. There's that message about the three different kinds of uh, things that destroy the seed. And the, they, they figured, the scholars figured that the original message was that no matter how many times that word of God keeps getting beaten down and defeated, eventually it is going to come forward and bear fruit because the word of God will not fail. But we have to give it a chance. It's not only enough to preach, it's also about being heard and then taking that word of God and sharing it with other people. The word of God is not my word, it's not Luke's word, it's not Paul's word, it is God's word. And since it is God's word, it will find success. But that world that longs to hear of God, it's there in the Bible. Pick it up. Go to a Bible class, you know, when we have our Bible study group. Do whatever you need to do, but get familiar with that word of God that is in that Bible and also that is here in church. God wants to have a conversation with us if we allow him the opportunity. So give God the opportunity to let his word be heard, and then when we hear it, share it with somebody else. So may this special, unique sacrament only of our church, may we understand it for all the power that it has, and may we use it to spread and to build the church worldwide. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord, if we gather before your altar at this time, <coughs> we do want to offer our thanks for all the people who have worked so hard to make today's Thanksgiving dinner possible. We also want to thank those who will be uh, making a donation later on at that dinner so that we can help support the work of Meals on Wheels and uh, all those parishioners of ours and also our neighbors who benefit from that program. And that will be done in the spirit of Christian generosity. We also ask the Lord at this time, uh, we are offering our prayers for Alex, who is 16 years old, who has lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease. Also, Alicia, a young mother of three of stage uh, four breast cancer, is offered by Cindy Hubbard. We offer our prayers to those also battling cancer, Meg Connors, and 
offered by Ellen and Don Sprosky, Randy Clemens by her grandmother Dottie Baronis, Carla Dickinson by Joe and Peg Fuster, Fathers Ray Trader and Maurice Lazelle is offered by myself, Richard Poe is offered by the Poe and Foster family, two-year-old Jack Sela is offered by Marianna Foster, and Frank Sprosky is offered by uh, the Sprosky, Gates, and Kirkendall families, and also Liz Richmond, diagnosed with cancer, who is raising three young girls on her own, is offered again by Cindy Bench. Are there any intentions that you would like to offer for the congregation? For all these intentions, Lord, and also the ones that we keep in the privacy of our thoughts, we ask, Lord, to hear them all, and also to bless each and every one of us here gathered, to be there, to be with our parishioners who are unable to be with us here today, and also those who are parishioners who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
country we honor on earth, which is seed for us to heaven. We ask it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that this holy offering, an expression of your activity through the incarnation of your word, Jesus Christ, may regenerate us in spirit and awaken us to a new life in you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever. Consecrate myself for their sakes now, they may be consecrated in truth. 
that all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me I would have in my company, for I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these other words of the Archbishop's in prayer and holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hand. And having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me.
intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus Christ, bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins from the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father, the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awakened me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy love. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last and I be in time with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives, reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that he has given me. I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body.
There was a white horse, its rider is called Faithful and True. He judges and wages war and righteousness. His eyes were like a fiery flame, and on his head were many diamonds. He had a name inscribed that no one knows except himself. He wore a cloak that had been dipped in blood. His name was called the Word of God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, as we have now heard the Word of God and have received the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, may we be strengthened in spirit and become ever more zealous for your holy church as we follow the voice of your incarnate Word, Jesus Christ, that we continue to build your kingdom here on earth. We ask through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. And through your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those whom I have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light. Light is the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through Him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for He Himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he did accept to be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's holiness, but by God. And the word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. 